So are you conducting particle size analysis and wondering if you're using too much material? Or if this sieve is even the right size? Well, don't worry. I'll explain everything so you know exactly what to do. Stick around. Hi there, what's up? My name's Andrew Kotlar, and in order to yield accurate and repeatable results, you must be aware of the sieve size and sample weight that's best for your particle analysis process. But how exactly do sieve size and sample weight complement each other during particle analysis? Well, W.S. Tyler has been a pioneer of test sieve analysis since the 1910s and has developed the expertise needed to help its customers achieve optimal particle analysis results. With that, we'll go over what sample weight is, how to accurately calculate the weight of your sample, what sieve size is, how to select the right sieve size, and how weight and size complement each other. When a sample is finished running through your test sieves, the sample weight is compared to the variating weights of sample material that have been retained on each sieve. From this, you can calculate the distribution of the material, but you have to know the initial weight of your sample. There's no way to yield a reliable distribution curve without it. This ideology applies to the physical test sieves used in sieve shakers and air jet sieves, as well as the virtual sieves used during a dynamic image analysis. And the sample weight will also help to ensure that your representative sample is an appropriate size for your test sieves. Testing too large of a sample can cause blinding in physical test sieves, preventing the particles from passing through the sieve stack. On the other hand, testing a sample that's too small may yield false results. Once you've divided your representative samples, the easiest way to begin the weighing process is to pick a round number that complies with the weight listed in your industry standards. You then place a collection pan on a scale that goes to at least the 10th decimal point and pour your sample into the collection pan. It should also be noted that most operations throughout the world use grams as a measurement unit. Now when weighing your sample, it's important that you take the weight of the collection pan into consideration. This will give you a very false sample weight otherwise. The term sieve size can be used to describe two aspects of a test sieve, the diameter of the sieve frame and sometimes the mesh count of the sieve, but for this purpose we'll refer to the diameter of the test sieve. Typically sieves have either a 12 inch, 8 inch, 3 inch, 300 millimeter or 200 millimeter diameter. Selecting the right diameter is crucial for any test sieve analysis. When you're conducting a test sieve analysis, you want to make sure that the sample material does not cover more than half the surface area of the mesh screen. If the sample material covers more than half the screen, the particles won't have enough room to find the openings and will eventually clog the mesh. Selecting the right sieve size for your operation ultimately comes down to the size of the particles you're analyzing. Let's say you're working with particles that are no bigger than one inch. In most cases, sieves with a diameter up to eight inch would be able to efficiently sieve the material. If this is what your operation typically looks like, you should refer to your industry standards to identify which sieves within the allotted diameter range work best. However, if you're working with particles that exceed one inch on a regular basis, a 12 inch sieve may be right for you since they're a little deeper and provide more room for the larger particles to move. To put this all into perspective, obtaining the weight of your representative sample is the starting point of any test sieve analysis and dictates the accuracy of your final particle analysis results. After the sample weight is recorded, you must run the sample through a sieve stack to generate a reliable distribution curve. This is where having the correct sieve size is everything. The sieve size you choose will dictate the particle's ability to find the openings in the sieve mesh properly. And when it comes time to weigh the sample material retained on each sieve, each fraction of material should ultimately add back up to the original sample weight and provide a true overview of your production line. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click that second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name is Andrew Kotlar and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.